up mel williams here i'm hopping on live real quick because there are some things i want to share with you guys um kind of a little bit of a social media dump um some tips and tricks that i've been seeing um that i wanted to offer some insight on but before i dive into that um for those of you guys that don't that don't know me my name is mel williams and i have a platform here called healing is sexy um i abbreviate it with his and um basically this platform is more than just like you know therapy advice or self-healing it's also about a lifestyle that i would like to help more people create for themselves um with that said before i dive into some of the topics that i have for you guys today i have three points written down but i wanted to share with you guys some of the reads that i've been doing lately so for my business owners um if you're a woman and whether or not your woman is still has great tips in it this book is called we should all be millionaires by rachel rogers and um it's a really good book so check it out if you are someone who is very entrepreneurial entrepreneurial and you're aspiring to um start a business or you've you know started a business and you're looking to the, get to the next level this is a great book with some great gems and resources that you should check out the other book that i recently finished reading that i would highly recommend for anybody whether you're starting a business or not is going to be get good with money by the budget nista very good book very insightful it walks you through from start to finish um about you know how to understand your credit score and building it up insurance from you know life insurance to car insurance um what else is talk about um, retirement, budgeting, um, what else did I have here? But basically, it gives you the foundation for building your financial future. Um, saving, getting out of debt, credit scores, um, how to invest, that was the other thing. Um, once you reach a certain level of investment, building your legacy and your, um, what is it, your estate, estate planning. So this is all very great information that financial literacy that we should all be learning really in schools, but of course they don't teach you. Um, it helps you become, takes you from being a consumer mind to more of a building wealth and being able to provide for yourself and your family. So definitely a great book to check out. Um, these two books are both very good books, good reads, and I highly recommend um, this one, especially if you're an entrepreneur. And this one, um, man, woman, you just need to understand this basic financial literacy stuff, okay? So, with that said, I want to go ahead and talk about some of the points that I have written down in my notes here um, and just share with you guys some of my thoughts that I've had. The first thing that I have written down here is, um, and the title of the live right now, is self-healing is also about positioning. So, I feel that a lot of us, when we think about self-healing and our self-healing journey, we think about therapy, we think about, oh, we know this is going to be a lifelong process, we think about undoing childhood trauma, we think about it being a journey and a process but something that i've kind of like recently kind of like started to change perspective on also is that your self-healing journey is not just about a process it's also about positioning yourself for your future so and in reading some of these books and watching some youtube lives um and other things is basically like if you were to start a career and you are like okay i want to be such and such or this far in my career within the next five ten years you set a career path you set a career goal so with that you're intentional about the trainings that you take you're intentional about going to conferences you're intentional about going to workshops because you're building up your knowledge and your skills to reach this certain point in your career it's the same thing with your self-healing journey and i don't think we really think about this so much when you're on your self-healing journey you're making an investment in yourself and you're also positioning yourself for the future that you want when it comes to your lifestyle when it comes to the kind of life that you want to live the kind of things that you want to be doing the kind of person that you want to be show up as that's also what your self-healing journey is about so it's not just about a process of you you know undoing all the trauma or healing from it and becoming, you know, healed from the trauma is also positioning yourself for the opportunities and for the things that you want to happen in your life to be attracted to you, okay? So when we talk about self-healing, I want you to not just think about, you know, the trees in the forest. I want you to see the whole forest and see that, hey, you know, five, ten years net from now, um, when I make this investment in myself with my self-healing journey, five, ten years from now, I'm going to be more of the person that I want to be, the more of the man that I want to be more of the woman that I want to be, more of the mother, the father, more of whatever it is that you desire to be in your life and living more of that lifestyle, your self-healing journey is really an investment in your future self. Um, much like, again, your career path. 
retirement planning. Um, anything that you can think about that you would have a five, 10 year plan for, um, even if it's a one year plan, your self healing journey is an investment in yourself, your future self and who you really want to be. So some of the other notes that I wrote down here is to start thinking of your self healing journey, not just as a lifelong process, but also you positioning yourself, which is what we just talked about. When you heal, you're becoming a better version of yourself because you're healing the wounded areas that's making you weak or blind. So a lot of people, again, there's a stigma that we've kind of, I'm glad to see that we're coming out of it when it comes to going to therapy or mental health and mental, mental wellness. Um, but also think of therapy, self-healing as addressing those wounded areas within you. Because if you're wounded and you're hurting, then you're obviously not going to be in the best, strongest position, not in the best, strongest frame of mind to show up as your best self or to approach situations, um, situations, I can't talk, <laughs> or to approach situations um, from a good, healthy mentality that's going to give you more of a productive outcome and result. So when it comes to your self-healing, when it comes to therapy, mental health, and all of that, stop seeing it. I'm glad, again, that we're not stigmatizing it as much um, before. We're kind of being more welcoming and embracing to that but I really want more people to see that again this is really an investment in your future self it's not that hey something's wrong with me I need to go get help and you know get better and whatnot start to think more long term how is this going to impact my life change me for the better position me for the better you know next year three years from now five years from now ten years from now okay we really got to start making that shift because and this is something else especially in the black community that we don't really think about even when it comes to our financials finances we don't really think about you know five years ten years from now um building wealth and building something that's going to sustain us for the long haul we are very short term and we don't really think long term so when it comes to your individual self-healing journey and you're thinking long term you want to be thinking that as well that hey i'm setting myself up my future self up i'm positioning myself for you know being in a good space um to be a good better partner um, to be a better person for myself, to love myself and to not allow my insecurities to keep taking me down. So really start thinking long term, you know, not just with finances, not just with even your self healing journey, but in any area of your life where you're hoping to, you know, progress and grow career wise, um, financial wealth wise, self healing wise, start to really think about how am I positioning myself right now? for my future. And that's a big thing that I've really been picking up in a lot of the videos I've been watching as far as, you know, um, growth and development. And it seems like, again, any area, whether it's your finances or your career, what are you doing right now today, um, even in the next week or so, to position yourself for your future? Because again, if we don't think, if we don't start thinking long term, like five, 10 years down the road, five, 10 years down the road is going to come and we're still not going to have made much progress we're still not going to have anything in place to secure us to where we can kind of be like on autopilot and not be stressing and worrying about, you know, okay, the next five, 10 years or, oh man, I didn't plan for retirement. So I don't have anything to sustain me during this period. Life happened. I wasn't prepared for this. I'm caught off guard. I'm thrown off. So that's kind of the importance of not just, you know, planning for your career, not just planning for your financial future and security, retirement, but also planning for yourself. Okay. The most important thing the most important investment, as you guys have heard, is going to be in yourself. You are your biggest asset. Your mind, your mentality is going to be your biggest asset, your biggest investment in yourself. And if your mind and mentality isn't right, you can even have, you know, you see celebrities, they have everything, but they're still miserable. They're still not happy. They're still making, you know, foolish mistakes and whatnot. Um, same thing for any person, whether you have a celebrity status or not. If you don't have the right mentality, if you're not making the right sort of investments, if you're not surrounding yourself with the right people, um, with the right material, if all you surround yourself, we are the product of our environments, right? So if we don't change our environments to something that's more productive and um, leading towards what we want to be in the next three, five, ten years, if we don't start to surround ourselves with people, resources, information, those sort of things that's going to lead us to where we want to be, five, 10 years from now, then we're not gonna see any growth. In fact, we might even see the reverse where we go and get worse. So we definitely want to make sure that we are surrounding ourselves with the kind of people, material knowledge um, that we want to acquire or become ourselves one day. So let me continue um, reading what I have here. So when you are healing, you're becoming a better version of yourself because you're healing wounds in areas that's making you weak or blind, okay? Something else that I kind of wanted to talk about when it comes to your self-healing journey a lot of times because we are 
children when the traumatic experiences happen to us. And as I've said many times, it doesn't have to be a violent, you know, abusive traumatic experience that happens. You can be traumatized from your childhood when your parents are emotionally unavailable, they neglect you or they invalidate you. So those are inner child wounds that we carry as well. And we might not even think anything of it. We might kind of normalize it like it's normal. Nobody, you know, everybody kind of experiences the same thing. I'm no different or no special from anyone else. Um, I know so many people that, you know, grew up the same way as me. They didn't have both parents in the home. They didn't um, have, you know, a, a parent that was supportive of their extracurricular activities or of their dreams or of, you know, their identity, the things that they wanted to do. And so we kind of just normalize it like, hey, you know, this is everybody's story or so many people's story. There's nothing special about me and my situation. But the reality is, is that whether we realize it or not, we have been traumatized and we kind of carry that, we do carry it um, forward into our relationships, especially into our intimate and romantic relationships. And it starts to show up as our insecurities, as I'm not good enough, as I can't or I'm afraid to set boundaries because if I do, then you know this person is gonna leave me or they're not gonna love me or whatever the case might be. For my ladies especially, it also shows up when we go above and beyond to you know pour love onto someone and be superwoman <laughs> to everybody and we're really people pleasing and we're you know might have a big caring heart but we have to have boundaries with that we can't continue to pour out ourselves to other people and get so little back in return and then you know grow resentful of it or feel um unappreciated so these are all signs um symptoms like i like to say i call them symptoms of our childhood trauma showing up and because we've kind of attached it to our identity because we don't really know anything different we just assign it to our personality and who we are then it's kind of hard to catch it's really kind of hard for people to you know look at themselves in the mirror and be like hey okay i know all along that something didn't feel right about this but i kind of just wrote it off to you know there's no good people in the world that this is the way that everyone is that this is you know I'm, there's nothing better out there so i kind of just have to deal with it and you know make the best of it but that's actually not the truth. The reality is, is that so many of us have been traumatized and we've normalized it. And what I would like to do with this platform is for us to stop normalizing it, okay? We do need to be able to heal from the traumas that we've had. And again, as I've said before, um, healing from your trauma is not something to be ashamed of because oftentimes it happens in your childhood and we have no control over, you know, we don't choose our parents. We don't choose the environments that we get born into or that we grew up in. We don't choose that. So healing from your childhood trauma and anything that's happened to you is definitely nothing to be ashamed of because you had no control over that. Um, in fact, we should be celebrating it more. <laughs> and that's something that I definitely want to do um, on this platform as well is to help more people feel that security and to feel that, hey, you know, it's okay for me to do the work, whether it's privately, whether it's in a group with other people that are experiencing the same thing, it's okay for us to start doing our self-healing journeys and to do the work on ourselves to get better and to be a better person, you know, for ourselves. Because again, that leads to the positioning. How am I positioning myself for the life that I want? I don't have to, you know, stay, I like to call it the matrix. I don't like to, um, I don't have to stay stuck in this matrix of where I, um, you know, 16, 17, you got to pick a career, go to college, you know, know what you want to do and have your whole life planned out for the next, you know, 40, 50, 60 years, however long you live. Um, there's this whole societal, I guess, order that we kind of all find ourselves into. And until something in our lives, you know, hits us upside the head long enough, we're kind of all I feel in this deep sleep where we're like, you know, following the social norms, go to school, go to college, get a job, start a family, you know, save up for retirement, don't enjoy our younger years and, you know, eventually die. <laughs> and so we don't want that. I don't want that for you guys. I don't want that for myself. And um, what I really want to push is for us to really start, you know, looking at our lives and being honest with ourselves like hey something's not right i'm not happy i keep dating toxic people i keep you know not valuing myself i love myself i thought you know i thought i love myself i take myself to the spa i get my hair done i do all this stuff but when i get into a relationship with someone why is it so hard for me to set boundaries when i feel like they're mistreating me why is it hard for me to set boundaries when i feel you know un undervalued or not appreciated 
why is it hard for me to set boundaries within myself to not give more than you know I have to give where I'm over giving and where I feel drained and resentful because the other person doesn't appreciate or see or value the efforts that I give so we really do have to start looking at self and really start looking at you know some of the patterns like where did this come from okay and I'm going to talk about that a little bit more especially when it comes to your inner critic because I saw some posts about that where people were like man if I was as mean to other people as I, I am to myself then I would have no friends. And it's like, that's kind of bad. <laughs> that's kind of sad. If you're going to be that, you know, mean to yourself. And um, it's like, you're with yourself 24-7. So why would you be that mean and ugly to yourself to where other people wouldn't even want to be around you, but you have to live with yourself? So we're going to talk about that a little bit more. Um, so again, I think I already covered this where I talk about, you know, your career path, your positioning yourself for your promotion, for your bonuses and whatnot. Um, same thing when it comes to your self-healing journey. Same thing when it comes to the lifestyle that you want. Contrary to popular belief, you don't have to, you know, trade your whole life and so much of your time. You're never going to build wealth and be rich or, you know, be able to sustain a lifestyle that you really want. Unless you're maybe like a minimalist or something and you don't really care about, you know, fancy things or whatnot, but it's not even about having the fancy things. If you want to be secure in living a good lifestyle and you have a family or even if it's just yourself, you're really not going to, you're really going to be able to make that happen by, you know, trading your time and working yourself to the bone, working two, three, four jobs. How many people do you know that has worked two, three, four jobs and they're really, you know, I guess really living the life that they want? So this is kind of, I feel like a societal, you know, mental order or whatever where we kind of get maybe tricked or whatever to believing into hey you know again go to school do your nine to five and you'll eventually make it and be happy that's not true <laughs> and I think a lot more people are realizing that with all the social channels that we have now to educate us and show us that hey there's another way to building wealth there's another way to acquiring actually living the life that you want um in your younger years versus waiting until you're 60 and then like you're like okay will I even be able to travel and do the things I want to do <laughs> okay so again when it comes to your self-healing journey stop thinking of it as just a process that you have to work through and get through also see it as yay i'm positioning myself to becoming more of the person i want to be doing more of the things i want to do okay um the next thing that i have here is inner critic okay so i had seen a social media post and someone had posted something along the lines of um no one is as hard on myself as I am and then someone else that kind of followed up with it like yeah that's so true if I was as mean to other people as I am to myself I wouldn't have any friends and again to me that just spoke volumes it's very sad um, that the person yourself that you live with 24 7 you would be that mean and critical to them to the point where if you were that same way to someone else they wouldn't want to be your friend okay let's really think about that um you hear the saying all the time that we are our own worst inner critic and i can understand that because you know you're with yourself 24 7 you're probably you know in your head or whatever 24 7 so it's understandable because you are you know <laughs> there's no separation of who you are and yourself so you see everything right but if it's to the point where like if the way you talk to yourself no one else outside of yourself would want to be around you or to be your friend then that speaks volumes and so there's something definitely fundamentally wrong there so the first question that i would have um for someone that feels that way that you're your own first inner critic and you put yourself down to that level so bad is where did you learn that from okay where did that come from where did you pick it up oftentimes i'm pretty sure if you think about it you can trace it back to your childhood where either your parents or either your friends or someone in your um close circle as you were growing up they were pretty probably very critical of you and they made you they created that inner critic voice in you so it came from somewhere and oftentimes again as a child you're you know starting with a fresh clean slate you didn't just make it up on your own you picked it up from somewhere so a lot of these behaviors and like mentalities and voices in our head that we have a lot of times if people will peel back the layer you'll see that it's not your own you'll see that you picked it up from um whether it was a critical parent that was saying you know making critical remarks and comments it may not even have been directed to you you probably was because if you're around them long enough it's, at some point it's going to be directed to you but you know you could have seen a 
parent saying, oh, you know, that looks ugly on the other person. Oh, they need to lose weight. Oh, you know, making very critical and harsh comments about other people in your presence. And then when you're at home, same thing. Why didn't you make that A? You know, why, you know, making you feel like you're not good enough. Why weren't you able to do this? Why didn't you, you know, make this play on the field? Why didn't you do this? Why, you know, X, Y, and the third. So a lot of times if you really peel back the layers of um, where did some of the voices like in your head come from, a lot of times it's really not your own. A lot of times it came from someone in your childhood that was that way and they were planting those seeds of that inner critic in your head. So again, you should be able to look at yourself objectively and be like, man, you know, man, I messed up. I wish I could have done better. Here's where I could have improved next time. But it shouldn't be to the point where, you know, if you were to have that same voice verbalized towards a friend or a family or someone else, a stranger even, that they would look at you like you had three heads and be like, what's your problem? Or something must be wrong with you or like who, you know, spat in your Kool-Aid. Okay, so you really want to make sure that again, if you are like past a certain point where it's not healthy and not productive and you're just like putting yourself down, um, then you definitely want to be like, hey, where did this come from? And start peeling that back. Um, where did this come from? And separate it from yourself. Be able to look at yourself objectively without being so harsh and critical. And that's where I really feel that you kind of have to be the parent that you didn't have. You kind of have to be like, okay, in a situation, imagine if you had a child. Um, and of course, you would want to be, I would imagine, better than the parent that you may have had. If you had a child, whether it was yours or you saw a child um, being, you know, bullied or whatever by another child, most people would, you know, step in and stop the abuse and the bullying from happening. And they would kind of help reassure and, you know, pour some love and support on that child. So this is the same scenario when it comes to your inner child. If you are someone that's beating yourself up super critical and whatnot, then you have to, again, be the parent to your inner child. Um, see if I can explain this concept. So I'm sure many of you are familiar with the term inner child. So I kind of see like yourself, you are you now your adult your, your adult self, your a parent to your inner child. So whenever you ha hear those critical voices in your head, like, man, I suck, I'm not good enough, I could have did this, I feel stupid and whatnot, that's kind of your um, parent self interacting with your inner child and you're kind of internalizing that. What you want to do is have your parent self stop that and be like, hey, yeah, I made a mistake, yeah, I feel dumb right now, but it's going to pass and I'm going to do better next time. You kind of want to speak to yourself as you would a child, speak to your inner child as you would um, a child and offer yourself that encouragement, offer yourself that love and support that um, you wish a parent, a supportive parent should have been able to offer to you. Okay, and that's really self-love. That's really, again, talking to yourself and kind of coaching yourself through. That's more where we need more people to be at rather than putting themselves down and being like, man, you know, I just suck and I'm just not going to be any better. Okay, because most people, you don't want to be around that. All right, and so you shouldn't want to continually allow that sort of atmosphere and environment to exist within yourself. Because again, whether you realize it or not, it's going to come out. Whatever is inside of you, it's only a matter of time before it spills out and maybe you start to notice friends kind of distance themselves or people kind of distance themselves from you because nobody wants to be around that kind of energy. Misery does love company, but um, people generally don't want to be around that type of energy. And if they are, they're probably miserable themselves. And so that's going to be a continual cycle of, you know, misery. And again, that's not a good environment for you, the not the best kind of environment or place for you, okay? The last thing that I had on here is that I saw a woman post, a wife posted in a group, and she was basically, it was this fairy tale post about how when you find the one that you love, you're meant to be, and things just magically, you know, work out and happen. And she shared the post with her husband, and he got, um, she got upset about um, his reaction. His, his reaction in response was, um, that's not true. I choose to love you every day. And, you know, that's how we make this work. And she was kind of like feeling some type of way and upset about it because she was like, man, this kind of robs me of the fairy tale feeling of being in love and that he chose me because, you know, it was meant to be and, you know, X, Y, and the third. And um, she was like, should I feel some type of way because he said that he chooses to love me every day versus he loves me because he saw me and he just knew I was the one. Um, <laughs> and so a lot of people, of course, trying to insert their opinion. And um, this is something, again, where we go back to society and some of the conditioning that we've had, especially for us women. We've been conditioned to believe in the fairy tale of, you know, love. We don't get taught 
about the underlying work and effort and commitment and dedication that it takes. And I would say that, you know, it affects men as well because I don't see, like, from what I've seen, I'm not saying that it's the whole entire story, but a lot of people, when we get into relationships, we don't know what to do. We don't know how to sustain them. We don't know how to grow them. We don't know how to, you know, show that love and that patience and whatever else it is that the other person needs. Um, Not to mention the trauma that a lot of people are dealing with that they haven't dealt with. So um, that's another big different area. But basically, this fantasy love life that she had imagined in her marriage, it doesn't just happen. So her husband was right in saying that, hey, you know, I choose to love you because, you know, I love you. And um, that's just shedding light on the reality that, hey, you know, love that happens is something that takes work. It takes commitment. It takes effort. And the, that doesn't mean that the fairy tale that she wanted couldn't exist or be the reality because it takes work and effort to make that, you know, fairy tale the reality, right? Um, if you were to plan for a Valentine's Day dinner to make it special, if you were planning for a proposal, marriage, whatever the case might be, those are fantasy moments that a lot of us, you know, will have memories about for our lifetime. But it's going to take some thought, commitment, and effort to, you know, make that even happen. So it's the same thing when we're talking about the concept of a relationship or a marriage or, you know, any sort of long-term commitment. It's not just this magical, you know, Disney movie where you fall in love with the person that's meant to be yours and, you know, you live happily ever after. Um, There's definitely going to be some work and commitment that comes with that because think about what that means. It means you see that person on their best and worst day. Um, It means that there are going to be days that you don't like each other. (laughs) There's going to be days, you know, where things are all good but you guys are going to have to be able to weather some storms and oftentimes those storms is where you know disconnects happen where the trauma unresolved trauma comes out and it's like okay um if you can't feel safe and secure in yourself to be able to regulate your emotions um and not act like you know a five-year-old child um in a relationship then it's only a matter of time, a matter of time before that relationship starts to unravel and fall apart. It's bad when it's one person, but imagine what it's like when it's two people. Um, and I'm sure a lot of people can relate um, when it comes to that. So when it comes to relationships, again, another thing that I would kind of like for more people to understand. I think we know this. Um, there's a difference between knowing and actually, you know, having that reality, I guess, show up and play out. We can know. Like, for example, if you're attracted to toxic people all the time, we can know that, hey, I need to set boundaries. Hey, this person isn't good for me. Hey, you know, you can know certain things. But the reason why we have a problem following through and actually doing what is best for us is because fundamentally, at our core, I like to call it programming, um, we haven't dealt with the underlying programming that's been throwing us off. And oftentimes, that is our trauma. Um, Our childhood trauma has programmed us to be okay with emotionally unavailable partners, to be okay with a certain level of abuse, to seek partners and that repeat that pattern. On a subconscious level, your body and your mentality has kind of learned that love and feeling safe is associated with these toxic things that you were exposed to in your childhood. And so in order to break that cycle, you have to start to reparent yourself and you have to start to literally retrain your body and your mind that, hey, those things are not safe. Those things are not okay. Here is what love and safety looks and feels like. And so your body, because all it's ever known is your childhood experiences where, again, your parents may have been emotionally unavailable, abusive, harsh critics, whatever it might be, requiring you to, you know, achieve before they paid you any attention. Um, If things were tight in your house and, you know, you kind of had to live through that experiences, then again, that creates an emotional insecure instability or instability. Yeah, if I can say the word. (laughs) But it creates that um, that insecureness in you and that unstable environment in you. And so as an adult now, you kind of have to take control. Um, Maybe your parents did the best that they could do. And that was the best that they could do. And so now as an adult, it is going to be your responsibility to um, reparent yourself and to shape the future that you want to stop, you know, any of the fairy tales that you saw as a child. Um, again, there are some people, you know, I did some black love interviews and stories where people have, you know, figured out that, you know, again, things aren't perfect, but we figured out how to make our love last, how to make our marriage last. But more times than not, you're going to be, of course, those couples that I did, inter- did interview, they had their, you know, point in the marriage where, hey, things went downhill and we didn't know we were going to make it or not. But we were able to figure it out and to stay committed and make it work. 
um, the same thing is true and happens in our own individual lives. Whether we have a partner, whether we stay single, whatever the case may be, we kind of have to look at ourselves in our childhood and be like, hey, is my past going to continue to define me? Or am I going to take control of my life and be like, hey, you know, regardless of what the past has been, regardless of what happened, regardless of whether or not my parents may have been able to be the good parents, nurturing parents, emotionally available parents that I needed, I'm going to take control and decide that, hey, um, this is what I want my life to be. This is how I'm going to treat myself. This is how I'm going to talk to myself. This is how I'm going to show up for myself. And really, it starts with yourself. It starts with you being who you want to be, finding out who you want to be, because oftentimes we have to unlearn who we're not, and then figure out who we do want to be. And that kind of like steers us in the direction of our purpose and more of what we want to do, who we want to be, um, and really just the lifestyle that we can set up for ourselves. So um, again, when it comes to that, you just really have to like decide for yourself that I'm no longer going to allow whatever happened in the past, people from my past to, you know, set me up for whatever life that they may have not known any better. Because again, this is oftentimes a generational thing that kind of passes down um, from one generation to the next. Our parents didn't know any better. They, um, they thought that, you know, just providing the basic necessities, roof over your head, clothes on your back, food on the table, that's being a parent. That is not what it means to be a parent, okay? That is what it means to be, you know, someone that provides your basic needs. But being a parent is definitely more about also providing that emotional stability, um, providing that nurturing safe space for a child to learn, for a child to grow and make mistakes and to become a better version of themselves. So um, being a parent is a lot because it's you taking on the emotional, you know, responsibilities and regulation of another human being. <laughs> Even if they're a child, <laughs> it can definitely be taxing. And it's um, relieving to see parents share that, hey, you know, I'm a good parent, I do right for my child, but sometimes I just have those days where I cannot, you know, stand to regulate another human being's emotions because, you know, kids, they throw tantrums. And as a child, if you do some deep diving, um, reading on your own, another book that I read called um, How to Do the Work, great book. And it talks about how, um, as a child, you're kind of like in your own world because you don't know any better. You're young, you have no clue about the world around you, everything is about you. So as a child, again, this kind of speaks to your trauma. If your parent is being emotionally unavailable, neglectful, or abusive, you automatically start to internalize that like it's my fault. Um, what's wrong with me? You know, what did I do wrong for where my parent doesn't love me, for where my parent got mad and upset? And it could really just be your parent doesn't have the emotional maturity to um, regulate their emotions. So oftentimes, um, a quick, easy example is like the father who, you know, gets upset, angry, um, gets upset and angry and takes that abuse out by yelling, maybe putting his hands on his wife in front of the kids, punching a hole in the wall. Um, that's an extreme example. But basically, the child usually, um, depending on how old they are, they're going to internalize that and be like, man, something must be wrong with me, you know, or maybe I can do something to fix my mom and dad to make them the relationship better. Or, you know, oftentimes you'll hear that parents or children will be like, it's my fault that my parents got divorced. It's my fault that, you know, my mom or dad left. It's my fault. And that's really coming from, it's really just a natural thing where um, children internalize. Um, it's about me because they don't know any better. And as we get older, we start to see outside of ourselves. We start to see that, hey, okay, um, I see myself and I can see that this other person, they have something that they might need to, you know, work on because they're projecting their insecurities or whatever onto me. But oftentimes, even as adults, if we haven't really addressed our trauma, we carry that forward into our relationships. It's my fault that my partner doesn't love me. What do I need to do to make myself a better partner so that they pay me more attention, so that they do the things that I want them to do? Um, it's a lot of that. Okay, so a lot of times, especially um, I would say for women, I'm a woman, so I can't speak from a man's perspective in that regard or on everything. But I can say a lot of women kind of we internalize, especially like if someone cheats. Why did they cheat on me? So there's something wrong with me. I'm not pretty enough. I'm not thin enough. I'm not attractive enough. You know, we start to internalize just like a child would. Um, something is wrong with me and it's my fault that this other person, you know, isn't a accountable isn't responsible is my fault that they you know can't control their urges or x y and the third so we start to internalize those things and um that's really the beauty of doing your work um healing from your trauma is because you really learn to find that you create that safe secure space within yourself 
to where you're not worried about being influenced about other people and um, what's going on on the outside. You create that secure confidence in yourself that, hey, I know who I am. Um, if something goes wrong or something happens, I can reparent to myself to the point where I'm securing myself. I'm not seeking outside validation from other people. Um, I'm confident and happy within myself. And when you're in that place, that puts you in the perfect position. Again, we talked about positioning earlier. You're positioning yourself to be a better partner. You're positioning yourself to live more of the life that you want. You're positioning yourself to attract more of the people, the circles, and the energy that you want when you are um, doing that inner healing work. Because again, if you don't you know, do that inner healing work on yourself, then you're really subject and open to whatever outside influences that you kind of happen upon. So whether it's, again, a cycle of dating toxic exes, whether it's your parents that still have some sort of influence or critical, you know, whenever you tell them good news, you got a promotion or something, they can never be happy for you. They always find something to criticize on or find a way to devalue um, your accomplishments, whether it's, you know, you got a degree and it's like, oh, that's great. You know, so-and-so did that, you know, two years ago. So... It's really about you building that self-confidence, that self-strength within yourself so that you take control of your life and you're not allowing other people, whether it's your parents, whether it's your um, partner, um, even choosing, better choosing with your partners so that you're not even spending a whole lot of time in situations where you're with the wrong person. So self-healing is really the foundation. I believe to me, personally, I believe that your self-healing journey is going to be like your number one priority, your number one purpose in life because that's going to actually help you figure out who you really are, the things that you're passionate about, the things that you want to do and accomplish in life, your lifestyle, um, the right person and partner for you. All of that, it all starts with self. It's all starting and tied to you being able to identify um, who you are and learning all of the layers that were kind of like conditioned and put on you as a child when you didn't have any control over your environment or the people that you were surrounded by you really do have to start peeling back the layers and figuring out okay this isn't me this came from my parents this came from my critical mom this came from my emotional available dad and you start to see that you attract people into your life that kind of represent them when you really think about it so you kind of have to be like hey at some point myself i had to be like hey i don't want to be surrounded by these type of people or this type of energy um, what am I going to do about it? <laughs> and that's where, you know, it really hit me that, hey, I need to do some inner healing work on myself so that I stop attracting the wrong type of people or the people that aren't going to make me be in the position that I want to be in five, ten years from now. If you envision your life five, ten years from now, what are the kind of people that you want to see yourself surrounded by? Um, what are the type of environments do you want to see yourself surrounded by? Is it going to be, you know, toxic exes? Um, is it going to be, you know toxic environments or is it going to be someplace that's healthy productive where you can network and feel safe and have great connections with good people so we really kind of have to really think about you know what is your five ten year plan not just for your career not just for your retirement but for yourself like what your life is going to look like your lifestyle maybe we can call it that your um lifestyle um five to ten year plan what's that going to look like and how are you going to get there and i promise you the Foundational key is going to be you taking your self-healing journey, starting that, getting started on that, and um, working on that. Um, let me see what else I had here. I know I kind of went off topic a little bit, but it's cool. Um, so with the husband and the wife scenario, I told her that she needs to accept the reality that it takes work and conscious, dedicated effort to make any dream or fantasy a reality. And again, that applies not just for a marriage or relationship, that also applies to us as individuals as well. Many of us, we have a vision or a dream of what we want our futures to look like, the type of lifestyle we want to have, the cars, the clothes, um, the amount of financial security. It doesn't, again, have to be about wealth where you're balling like a celebrity, but it could just be about, hey, I just want to be financially secure. I want to be able to have my house paid off, um, Maybe be able to put my kids through college, um, have a car, not have to worry about debt. Um, it could be anything, like whatever your dream and vision is. It could just be, I just want to be financially secure and stable. Have a job that I don't have to worry about losing. Have a job that pays, you know, the bills and I have, you know, the house and cars paid off. It could be that. Whatever it is, what is your five, ten year vision and what is your plan to getting towards that? Um, again, it could involve learning um, financial literacy. 
It could involve learning a bunch of skills. It could involve going to workshops and surrounding yourself with different people that think like you. That's very important when it comes to your self-healing journey or any journey in life. You got to surround yourself with people that are on the same wavelength. Like, hey, you know, I'm serious about this. I'm putting in the work. I'm going to get better. And they hold you accountable. They inspire you, motivate you. And they're also going to hold you accountable. Because if you find yourself in an environment where you're surrounded with negativity and people that, you know, are couldn't, like, let's say you want to go for financial wealth or financial stability, and you surround yourself with friends and people that are constantly distracting you, like, hey, let's go here and spend money here, let's go shopping, blah, 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 and you're like, man, I know I have a budget, I know if I do this, it's going to break my budget, I know if I do this, I'm not going to reach my goal, that's the importance of surrounding yourself with the right type of people, the right type of environment, where you're not even going to have that temptation, it's about positioning, you're positioning your, you're positioning yourself to not even be in a position where you can be distracted, and, you know, get off sidetrack off of your goal same thing when it comes to your self-healing journey when it comes to negative people critics complainers um especially in the relationship um realm where we see you know men and women going at each other like oh you're not a good woman or high quality woman or oh you're trash and hoes and blah 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 um all this drama that we see on relationship platforms you have to be mindful and careful of what you are even surrounding yourself with on your social media platforms, in your feed, in your circles. If you're surrounding yourself with your homeboys that are constantly talking down on women and degrading them, then how do you ever expect to meet a woman of quality and be able to you know how to treat her if your viewpoint is always about talking down to women and degrading them? Same thing for women with men. If you surround yourself with home girls that's always talking about he ain't this or that, if he doesn't do this and that, if he doesn't buy me a bag, if he doesn't, you know, pay all the bills, blah, 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 then he's not a man, then how are you, even if you meet a good man, or same thing for men, if you meet a good woman, how are you going to know how to appreciate that and to sustain that relationship? You're going to have a lot of unlearning to do. <laughs> and so you really just have to be mindful from jump, from right now, this moment. How are you positioning yourself to, you know, not just have the best life for yourself that you want, but if you want to be in a relationship, married and have kids, how are you going to position yourself right now to be a good parent, to be a good partner? You know, whenever that does happen, three, five, ten years from now, what are you doing now today to position yourself? I don't think we think about that enough. We think about our career like, you know, five, ten years from now, I want to be, you know, the regional manager. I want to be the CEO, blah, blah, blah. Okay, that's great for your career life, but now... Um, what does your actual, you know, at home life look like? A lot of us, we kind of sacrifice our at home life because we're like, I'm going to be on the grind. I'm going to get this money, get this bag. And then it's like, okay, when you, you know, have a wife and you have kids, then what does that life look like with that? You know, are you going to be able to be available, be present, or are you going to allow that work life to consume you? Is that what you want? Are you okay with that? And then because you have other people's lives involved, how is that going to affect them? How is that going to, you know change the way that your life looks if you have an unhappy spouse or kids that can't even connect with you because you're not there so these are all things you know holistically you got to think about and i know it can seem overwhelming if you start to think about too many things at once and that's why i think the most important thing is to focus on yourself your self-healing first so that you can make sure that the decisions that you make is coming from an authentic place of yeah this is who i really am this is what i really want and you can be more secure and confident when you make these decisions like okay i want to follow this career path okay i met this person they are the right person for me um and so on okay um with that said um <clears throat> the only other thing that i wanted to share with you guys if you haven't already seen it, I am doing a Healing is Sexy Lifestyle channel, um, Challenge in October. From October the 10th to the 14th, um, I am going to be doing a five-day workshop nightly for about an hour. Those of you guys that sign up, I'm going to be walking you through. It's not just me talking you know, to you guys. I like to give you guys actual homework and assignments so you can start to see these things for yourself in your own life. But I want you guys to understand things like your attachment style. I want you to understand how to be able to drill back down to your own child and to start doing the self-healing work on yourself whenever you catch yourself with a limiting belief whenever you catch yourself um having this like you know perspective about life relationships yourself i want you to be able to catch it and be like hey where did that come from um and tie it back to your childhood so again you can really start to unlearn some of the behaviors coping behaviors that you picked up in your childhood and really start to show up again more as your authentic self to find out who you really are and the person that you um really want to show up to be so we're going to be doing a lot of healing work during these five days and i want you to again be able to i want to empower you to be able to do this by yourself 
and on your own. Of course, I'm still here um, to provide a supportive community, but I definitely want to help more people be empowered to um, be their own self healer because therapy is great. I even, you know, still recommend it um, to go hand in hand, but be real. Like after you go to that therapy session, um, they're going to give you homework too. And if you're not um, actively engaged, if you're not doing the work for yourself, it doesn't matter how many therapy sessions you go to and how much money you sink into it. Um, eventually, it's going to come down to the wire where you have to do the work for yourself. You have to make that investment in yourself. You have to, you know, go through your thoughts and, you know, unlearn those limiting beliefs and start to um, do that work for yourself. The therapy, myself, we are tools in your toolkit. We are guides that can help you. Um, but at the end of the day, each person is going to have to take that ownership and responsibility of their life and of their healing journey. And do the work. Um, that's really what it's about. It's about doing that work for yourself. And um, this platform, Healing is Sexy, is definitely here for you guys to help you guys, again, get some of the insight and knowledge as, you know, I've learned it, as I'm learning it. I'm not perfect. <laughs> I'm still, you know, doing my own learning for myself. So definitely here to share with you guys. I'm definitely here um, if you guys want to reach out, whether it's the DMs. Um, and definitely, you know, I hope to see some of you guys in that challenge um, next month. Um, from the 10th to the 14th of October, again, we're going to be doing a lot of exercises that's going to help you unlearn um, some of your limiting beliefs and maybe the things that you've thought about yourselves and replace them with more tools that's going to help you to start to shift and position yourself for the lifestyle of who you want to be more. Um, again, it might completely change. You might find out that, hey, this career that I'm currently doing is not what I want to do. I want to do something totally different that's more in alignment with who I am. It's really about you know, discovering yourself and also setting that confidence and boundaries within yourself to where you show up as your authentic self and other people aren't able to easily influence that. You're not, you know, going to feel unworthy or that you can't, you know, you have to settle for something or someone that's not right for you, a relationship that's not right for you, regardless of how old you are, okay? I've been working with people that are younger than me. I've been working with people that are older than me. And again, that's the beauty of this is that it really doesn't matter how young or old you are. Um, it's never too late, never too early, especially either or to start your healing journey and to like unlearn things that aren't true to who you are and to be more of, you know, who you really are. So it doesn't matter how old or young you are. It's never too late. And the sooner you do it, <laughs> the better you're going to um, enjoy, you know, your life yourself the skin and the body that you're in the sooner you do it the better okay so that's kind of all i had for this live today thank you guys for joining me again i hope to see some of you guys next month and um yeah if you guys have any questions feel free to dm and reach out um check out the website that's where you can find out all the details about what the um, week is going to entail so the website is www.healingissexylife.com It'll be on the home page and you can read all the details. And also another thing that I wanted to mention is that um, I like to make healing fun. Okay, I know a lot of times people are like, you know, afraid of it um, because it can be really tough. Some of the experiences that people have had in their childhood. And I want to not just create a safe environment where we normalize our self-healing and have better, you know, dating partners to choose from because they've done that healing work. I also want to make healing fun. So one of the things that I'm offering um, with this challenge is a chance for you guys to win two nights in Miami um, in a nice place because I like to, you know, that's how I do things. <laughs> so um, definitely check it out. And I'm definitely going to be doing a whole lot more things in the future where, again, my goal is to create a safe space for you guys to normalize your self-healing journey in a community of like-minded people. I want to change the dating landscape. I want to make dating safer and fun for more people because people are doing the work to heal themselves. And I also want to make it fun, okay? Healing doesn't have to be this dark, scary place where, man, I got to go back into my childhood and look at all the dark, bad things that happened to me. No. Healing should be, again, celebrated because that's you becoming your authentic self. That's you learning who you are. That's you showing up as the best version of yourself. And we should definitely celebrate that more and not be afraid to embrace it. We should, you know, celebrate it and definitely be more inspired to go towards that instead of being afraid and, you know, scared of tapping into our true selves, okay? So that's all I have for you guys. Guys, be safe out there, um, especially on the East Coast with this um, hurricane, this storm that's coming through. Be safe out there. Um, stock up. <laughs> don't wait till the last minute. Don't get caught in no floods or nothing, okay? I want you guys to be safe out there. All right, guys, so that's all I have. Feel free to DM me um, in the meantime, and you guys have a great weekend, okay? Be safe out there. Bye.